In this video, I will demonstrate how to send Outlook emails from Excel using VBA code. I will cover everything you need to know about sending emails, including adding multiple attachments and recipients from a range, and how to include your email signature. And that's not all. At the end of this video, I will reveal a clever technique to condense the entire email sending process into a single line of code. If you want to try the code out for yourself, it's available from the link in the description below the video. So let's go ahead and get started. If we want to use Outlook from our Excel VBA code, then we need to add a reference to the library. So we go to Tools References, and then we look for Microsoft Outlook in the list. So here you can see Microsoft Outlook 16 Object Library. So we normally pick whatever is the latest number, but this doesn't change that much. Now once we have that selected, we have access to the library, so we can declare our Outlook object. So we say dim my Outlook as new Outlook application. So this creates a variable, the my Outlook variable, and this references the Outlook application. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to create an email. So we declare our email variable. And this is a variable that is from the Outlook library and it's called a mail item. So what we do is we set out mail and we use the my Outlook create item. And this will create the email because we specify the type as being ol mail item and then puts it in our variable outmail. So now we've got our new created email. And all we've got to do then is fill in the different parts of the email, just like as if you were writing one manually. Now we use the with statement so that we're, we don't have to use outmail everywhere. So anytime VBA sees a full stop on its own, it puts outmail in front of it. And so two is obviously the recipient of the email. So I'm just gonna put random email addresses here. Obviously they don't exist. And subject is obviously subject. And all of these that we've used so far, as you can see, are all strings. So in other words, they're text type uh, variables. Now a very useful thing when we're testing this is to use display, because display shows us the email. So we can actually just run the code to this point and see exactly what we're going to be sending. And then if we're happy enough, we can send it. Now for all my testing, I normally just comment out the send line. And then if I'm happy with everything else, I can go and I can test by sending. But using display is very, very useful because we can see exactly what is going to be sent. So we run the code and you can see that it's created our email. It's created the recipient as we specified. It's created the subject that we specified and it's created the body. So creating and sending a simple email is very, very easy to do in VBA. Of course, in the real world, we would want to do a lot more than sending a basic email. So let's have a look at some interesting things that we can do with Outlook. In our first example, we just sent the email to one person. But obviously, when we're writing emails in the real world, we want to send them to multiple people. So how would we do it? Well, to do it is quite simple, really. We can just give the two property a comma separated string. So you can see here we've got two email addresses. Now if we want to do CC and we want to do BCC, we do it exactly the same way. We provide a comma separated string. Now in this case I've just got one, but we can have multiple just like in the two property. Now there is another way that we can add recipients and we'll have a look at that in a moment, but let's run this code and let's check out the email that we created. And you can see that we've got the recipients, the CC and the BCC, just as we would have expected. Now there's another way that we can add recipients, and the other way that we can do it is by using the recipients add property. There is no major advantage between either of these approaches, but at the end of this video, I'll show you an easy way of adding multiple attachments, multiple recipients, and even a signature, and doing all this with just one single line of code. Now we're going to look at how to use a range of email addresses as our recipients in our email. Now we're going to look at two ways to do it. And the first way we're going to look at will work with all versions of Excel. And the second will work with Excel from 2019 onwards. So the first thing we'll do is declare our variables. We're going to have two variant variables. One is going to be for our for loop and the second one is going to be for our array. So we use addresses and we assign this to a range. And what happens then is VBA will automatically convert this range into an array. Now, once we have it in the addresses, we basically just do a for each through our array. 
and we add it to our recipients. So we do dot recipients dot add and the, then the current address, which is item in our for loop. So let's go ahead and run the code and see what happens. And when we check our email, you can see that all the recipients were written to the to field. Now let's look at an even better way of doing this. If we're using Excel 2019 or later, then we can use a formula to get all the recipients from the range to our email. We use worksheet function that gives us access to all the worksheet functions. And then we select text join. And what text join does is it allows us to add a delimiter. So we add a comma. The second parameter allows us to either include or ignore blanks. We'll just say true. And then the final one is simply the range that we want to join all the data from. So this is the range of our recipients. And that's all we need. And now when we run the code, you can see that all the recipients ended up in our email just as we expected. And all we needed was one line of code. So you can see this is pretty nice. To add an attachment to an email is very simple. We simply use the attachments.add function of the email. And then we supply it simply the file name. Now this is the full file name, including the full file path. When we run the code, you can see that our email now has the attachment. If we want to get a list of attachments from the spreadsheet, we can do this in the same way that we read the list of recipients. So first of all, what we do is we have our array. So I'm going to change addresses to files, and then we'll change the range to the range on our spreadsheet, which is C2 to C6. And then instead of recipients, we're simply using attachments add. And now when we run this code, you can see that all the files have been attached to our email. Now we're going to look at how to include our signature in the emails that we sent. We have been using display already for testing our code, but we actually need to use this if we want the signature to appear. We use the display and this will automatically add the signature. And the next thing we need to do is make sure that we don't delete the signature. Now we've got to remove this body line because if we add a new body before the display, this will delete everything that's previously been in our email. Let's run our current code to see what we get. And you can see in the email that we have the signature with the nice new MVP logo. So what we want to do now is we want to put in the body text, but we don't want to replace what's there. So we use HTML body, which is essentially the same as the body, but it's the HTML version of that code. And what we do is we simply say, this is our email body code, and we're going to add what's currently in the HTML body to the end of that, and that will give us our new HTML body. So essentially, we're inserting the test email body text into our email. So let's run the code and see what we get. And you can see that we get the test email body text that we added, and we still retained our signature. So this is how we keep our signature in our email that we're sending. Just make sure that we do the display first, and then we change the HTML body afterwards. Configuring our emails can be a little tricky, and this can get very messy if you're writing a professional application. So what I've done is I've created a sub, and this makes life much easier. Now it has a lot of parameters here, and it might look a little complicated, but actually I'm going to show you loads of examples on how to use it, and you'll see that it makes life very simple indeed. Our first example shows how to create a basic email. So we simply include the email address, the subject, and the body. And we can have multiple email addresses in that parameter if we like. Now the second example, if we want to include a signature, we simply pass true to the include signature parameter. The default is that the signature is not used, but we can change that as well if we like. If we want to add our recipients from a range, we can do so easily using the recipients range parameter. We simply assign it to the range and this will take care of adding it as the recipients for our email. Now, alternatively, if we want to use an array instead for our recipients, then we can use the recipients array parameter. Now, the range parameter has precedence here, so if we included both parameters, it would be the range one that gets used and not the array. If we would like to add attachments to our email, we can do it in a very similar way to how we added recipients. We've got three parameters this time, attachments range, which adds a range, attachments array, which allows us to add an array of attachments, and finally the attachment string, which allows us to add a comma-separated string of attachments. 
Now, here is an example of an email where we're including all different parameters, such as recipients, attachments, and including signatures. So you can see that using this sub is very useful because it makes configuring our emails quite simple. Now, if you want to code for this sub, then download it from the link in the description below the video. So far, we've been sending one email. Imagine we wanted to send multiple emails at a time, and imagine we were sending the multiple emails, one for each address in a range. So th this is how we would do it. First of all, we declare a variable as a variant, and this allows us to read through the range. So we say for each email in our range, and then for each of those emails, we're going to call our send email function that we just looked at, and we pass it whatever parameters that it needs. Now you can see this makes doing this much easier when we just have one sub for sending an email. Before you send data in an email, you often need to copy it and filter it first. So make sure to check out my playlist here on copying and filtering data using VBA.